Now, you may not have drawn your character on your original design, so you can go back and do that if you like to make sure you know the kind of sprite that's going to be going through the maze. Or you can have a look at mine and see if I give you any inspiration. Remember, this maze game is looking from above down onto the maze. So we're really only going to see the top of the character's head. Okay, so now we're ready to design our sprites. Now, because this is a top-down maze game, we're going to create something that looks like an explorer, but looking down from above on top of his head. So what I'm going to do, I've gone into Sprite 1. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name my Sprite Explorer. Uh, this is really good practice because this now means that every time I refer to this sprite, I know which one it is because he's called Explorer. Now... I'm going to go down to here and choose uh, paint because I'm going to paint this one myself. Um, and once I've got a blank canvas, I can now get rid of these two cats here. Let's get rid of those ones. Now, uh, I don't know if you know this, but in Scratch, um, when a character moves, the default direction that it will move in is to the right. So if you want to draw a character and say move forward, it will move in the right direction. So we're going to draw our character facing right. Okay, so I need a nice brown type colour. So let's just go uh, in here and see if we can make a nice brown colour for his hat. There we go, that's pretty good. I'm going to give it an outline, a black outline. Maybe a little bit thicker, maybe five or six. There we go. And I'm going to choose the circle tool. And I'm going to draw a nice big hat. There we go. There's his hat. And inside that hat, I'm going to draw a slightly smaller oval. I'm going to make sure that that's in the middle, just like that. Let's put it slightly to the... No, let's put it right in the middle. There we go. And I'm going to use the paintbrush tool to uh, just put in a couple of lines so that it looks like uh, we know which way the front of his hat is. That's the front of his hat. Brilliant. And what I'm going to do now is use the paintbrush tool again. And I'm going to choose the same colour as the hat. So by using the dropper tool there, I can choose the same colour as the hat. I'm going to make my pen a little bit thicker. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to draw on a couple of arms sticking out the side like I'm looking down on his shoulders. Now one of these arms is going to be swinging forward because he's going to be walking. So I'm just going to make it look like that. There we go. Now it doesn't matter if I go over the black a little bit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this arm to the back. So by clicking on that shape that I've just drawn and clicking up here or it says backward I can keep clicking until it goes behind the hat there we go fantastic and I'm gonna do the same on the other side but this time it's not gonna be swinging backwards it's just gonna be slightly backwards just like that so it's not a full backward swing of the arm it's just a little bit there we go and same thing I'm gonna make that uh, go backwards <clears throat> so it's just behind the hat there we go and uh, now with my paintbrush tool, I'm going to draw a shoe, a shoe that will emerge uh, on the opposite side of the arm that's swinging forward. So I'm just going to have a little shoe here. Uh, it doesn't matter if we go over the, the, head, uh, the hat again, because like before, I can click on it and send it backwards. There we go. So I've got a little shoe emerging. And then he needs a hand on, that, on the arm that's swinging forward. So I'm going to try my best to find a colour that's a bit like a peachy peachy type colour and we'll go with that to create uh, a hand. There we go, that will do. Brilliant. I'm going to use my paintbrush and just draw a hand. Now he doesn't need fingers, he can just have a little hand like that. There we go. Now, this is uh, looking down on top of my explorer. He's got his hat on, his arms swinging forward and he's got one foot that way. Now, to make it look like he's walking 
I'm going to duplicate this costume. In fact, I'm going to name it first. I'm going to call it Walk One. I'm going to duplicate by going up to this costume up here in the corner, right clicking and then duplicating it. And you see it's automatically called it Walk Two. And I'm going to flip this. I'm not going to edit it in any way. I'm going to flip it. But to flip it, I need to make sure I convert to bitmap. OK, so, oh, no, I don't have to convert to bitmap. I can just click on my arrow in the vector mode and I can flip vertical. Here we go. And now it looks like if I click between these, it looks like he's walking along, you see. Brilliant. So there we go. Now he's obviously much too big at the moment. I can't fit him through a maze. So if you look down here when I've clicked on my Explorer sprite, it gives me some of these options. One of them is size. So I'm going to decrease his size maybe to 30 from 100% to 30%. There we go. There he is. And now he looks about the right size to get through my maze. And that is going to be my main sprite. Now, don't forget, whenever you do something in Scratch, you think, right, that's the first thing that I've done. Brilliant. I'm up to a certain point. You need to save. Now, if you're using Scratch online, which I thoroughly recommend, then you just need to make sure that if it says save now up there, you've clicked it. And if it doesn't say save now, that means it's all nice and saved. If you're using Scratch Desktop, make sure you do file, save to your computer, and make sure you save it somewhere where you're going to remember where it is. Now that you've seen me design my sprite in Scratch, it's your turn. Design your sprite and give it a couple of costumes to make it look like it's moving.